Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Union Zor Education. Uh, I will continue talking about similarity problems. Um, this is the lecture number six uh, about problems, uh, which are using the similarity. So, um, basically there are certain uh, algebraic usage of theorems related to similarity which in the previous lecture I was just trying to explain how to manipulate with segments um, to obtain new segments, the length of which is somehow related to the previous segments. For instance, how to multiply segment by two, which basically means how to uh, construct another segment with the length twice as long as the previous segment, as a given segment. So there are many different geometrical algebraic um, uh, problems which uh, I, I would like to address here. And obviously multiplying the segment um, by two is one of the simplest things. So let me just go through all these problems uh, and I will try to explain their solutions. Oh, by all means, uh, try to do it themselves first and then listen to this lecture. All right. So. The first problem is a very simple one. Um, oh, one more thing which I wanted to uh, mention. If I'm saying that there is a given segment of certain lengths, actually it always implies that not only a given segment is given, but also another segment which has the unit lengths. So I always assume that if you have any segment measured in some units, the unit segment is also given. So I won't even mention this. And um, in my manipulation of the segments, when I'm saying multiply by seg segment by two, it actually means construct another segment with the lengths twice as big. Or adding two segments means, again, constructing another segment with the lengths equal to the sum of these lengths. So just bear with this terminology, it's very simple. All right. Um, perform the following linear algebraic manipulations with given segments. Okay. A, three times A. B, A plus B, and C, A divided by five. Okay, this is the simplest of all the different manipulations uh, which can be done with a segment. This one is obviously, if uh, A is given, you just use um, the compass and each of these segments is A, and this is 3A. That's simple. Now, addition A plus B is also simple. If you have another segment, then you basically, again, using your compass on a straight line, you construct the first segment, which is uh, congruent to, uh, to the A, and then another congruent to the B. Combined segments will be A plus B. OK, these are the simplest constructions. Just one little tiny bit more complex is a division. Um, and here the similarity actually comes handy. So if you have uh, a segment, A, how to divide it by 5? Well, have any line uh, at certain angle to this segment and have any segment of any length. Basically, if I'm usually saying that there is always a segment of the length one, you can use this segment, but basically it doesn't really matter. So let's say you use this one. You put five times, one, two, three, four, five. So this is of the length five. You connect the ends and construct parallel lines. And as, as I was 
as, as I, I have proved um, the theorem that if you have equal segments on this side of the angle and these lines are parallel, then these are equal as well. And since they are equal, each one of them is one-fifth of original segment. All right. Um, now let's go to a slightly, slightly more complex problem. All right. I'm giving a linear equation, and I'm trying to find a solution. But I'm using segments instead of numbers. So if you have a segment A and another segment B, and you have a linear equation, x minus a equals b. How to construct a segment x, which is the solution to this equation when a, where a and b are given? Well, simple. First, you use algebra to solve this equation. And obviously, the solution is, let me do it strictly by the rules, you add a to both sides, you have x minus i a plus a is equal to b plus a. Now, using the associative property of addition, you combine minus a and a, which is 0. So on the left, you have x. And on the right, you have b plus a or a plus b, because it's commutative. And this is a solution. And this is exactly what I did the previous problem, how to construct a segment which is a sum of two given segments, which you have already learned how to do. So that's the solution. Now, let me just emphasize that this is a combination of algebra as far as the solving solutions and geometry as far as construction. OK, next one. It's as easy. B. 3x minus a equals to 0. Well, again, plus a to both sides. And I will skip a couple of obvious steps. Is equal to a. Now you divide by 3 both sides of the equation. And again, skipping a couple of uh, steps which are related to associativity and commutative, etc., etc., you have x is equal to a divided by 3. And this is a problem which we have solved before when I was basically explaining how to divide a segment by 5. So this is by 3, the same thing. One, two, three. Connect the parallel lines. Each one is one third. Okay. So again, the combination of algebraic solution of the linear equation and geometric property of uh, how to construct a certain um, segment are both combining together give you the solution to this problem. By the way, I didn't mention it actually um, in notes to this uh, to this lecture. But what if you have another equation, 3x plus a equals to zero, where a is a given segment? If I will try to solve it exactly the same way. Uh, after a couple of manipulations, I will have x equals to minus a over 3. But we are talking about segments. Segments cannot have negative length. So basically, this is not a solution. This is algebraic solution, but there is no geometric solution. So this is an equation which does make sense in pure algebra, where x can be any real number or any integer number or any a rational number, we can talk about this. Actually, among integer, it doesn't exist if A is integer. 
uh, but among rational numbers, yes, the solution does exist. But rational numbers is completely different from the segments. Segments, well, actually, segments lengths are only non-negative real numbers. Non-negative is important. And this, since A is a segment, so this is a positive real number. With a minus, it's a negative real number, and there is no such segment which has a negative length. So basically, this is a, an equation which does not have a solution in geometric terms. Although it does in, in let's say, rational numbers or real numbers. All right. Uh, and the last equation, x over 5 minus a equals b. All right. First algebra. Add a to both sides. x over 5 is equal to a plus b. And again, I skipped a couple of steps here, uh, which are related to associativity and commutative laws. And now I multiply by 5, both sides of the equation. And skipping a couple of times, I get 5a plus b. Now, how to construct this if you have a and b? Well, this is not a one-step procedure. This is a two-step procedure. And obviously, you should realize that in two steps, you can do it. First step is a plus b. So first, you do a and b. And you get, let's say, c is equal to a plus b. Now, second is 5 times c. And again, you know how to do this. Straight line and 5 times uh, segment c. So this is a two steps geometric uh, procedure. First, again, algebraic solution uh, of the equation. Secondly, you construct the formula for x using whatever we know how. Okay. All right, next. Next is something which is related to the theorem, which is very important, and I'm actually going to, to prove it again, just to uh, make sure that everybody understands what it is. If you have a right triangle, this is 90 degree angle, right angle, and you have a hypotenuse, let's call it H, and let's call uh, these two segments P and Q. And these are two casualty, A and B. Now, notice that these two triangles, I can put letters A, B, and C, and H. Uh, triangle CHB and CAH. They are similar for obvious reasons because this angle equals to this angle and this angle equals to this angle. Now, why is that? Well, that, that's kind of obvious because uh, you have uh, these two angles in sum are equal to 90 degree and these two angles are also 90 degree that's why these are equal similarly here these two in sum are equal to 90 degree that's why these two are equal to, and that's and, and these two are also equal to 90 degree. That's why these two are equal. Okay, so we have two triangles, CHB and CHA, which are similar, which means sides are proportional, uh, if you remember. So let's just uh, write down this proportionality using 
the sides which are lying across equal uh, angles. Now, in the left triangle, across this angle is H, right? In the right triangle, across the same angle is Q. Now, in the left triangle, across this angle is P. In the left triangle, across the same angle is H. So what we have is H over Q is equal to P over H, or if you transform it, it would be H squared is equal to P times Q. Now, again, when something like this is written, H, P, and Q are lengths. They're not segments. We don't really multiply segment or, uh, or, or square the segment. We multiply its lengths, or multiply lengths of one segment by lengths of another segment. So that's what it actually means. But in any case, what I would like to point out is that the altitude divides the hypotenuse into two segments, which uh, which satisfy this uh, equation of proportionality, or this one, which is the same thing. Um, it's actually called uh, uh, geometric mean. Basically, h is square root of p times q, right? In another, in another way to represent the same formula. So H is a geometric mean of P and Q. All right. Now, just remember this. And now, let me just um, use this particular theorem, which I have just proven, and I did actually prove it before in one of the lectures, to construct a segment the length of which is a geometric mean uh, of these two segments. So how to construct, let's say, H if I know P and Q? So that would be my geometric mean. So if I can, knowing P and Q, if I can construct a right triangle, then its altitude would be exactly the geometric mean. OK, how to do it is very simple. We all know that if you inscribe the right triangle into a circle, then the hypotenuse would be a diameter, something like this. Why? Because this is 90 degree. And 90 degree is an inscribed angle, and it should be supported by an arc of 180 degree, which is half circle. So, in any case, if you have a hypotenuse, then you basically have a circle, and every point on this circle can be a vertex of a right triangle. Now, out of all these right triangles which have this hypotenuse, I have to choose one which has an altitude dividing my hypotenuse in segments P and Q. So if P and Q are given, that means P plus Q, which is a hypotenuse, is also given. I can construct a circle around P plus Q as a hypotenuse. And now I can say that every dot, every point on, on this circle can be a vertex of the right angle. Now, how to choose the one which we need? Well, we don't have just the hypotenuse. We have these two segments as well, P and Q. So we know that, hypoten uh, that the altitude should fall uh, into this point. So let's just draw a perpendicular here. That would be our altitude, right? Which means this is our triangle. So from the hypotenuse, which is P plus Q, we draw a circle. Now, the points, uh, the segments P and Q are positioned on this hypotenuse 
and the, the boundary between them, the dot which separates them, is this one. And through this point, we draw a perpendicular to a diameter. Wherever it intersects the circle, we get the vertex of the triangle which we need. Well, obviously, this is exactly the same triangle and exactly the same um, altitude. OK, so if we have two segments, P and Q, we know how to build a triangle with an altitude dividing hypotenuse into these two segments, P and Q, which means we know how to build an H which is equal to geometric mean between these two uh, segments. That's what we will use in many problems. Which follow. I just wanted to do this theoretical deviation before solving other problems. So, construct the segment which is equal to A times square root of three fifths. All right. It doesn't seem to be obvious, at least from the first kind of side, but let's just think about it. If I want to uh, to do this, I have to actually reduce. Uh, my problem to something which is more, I would say, constructible. So let me first transform this into this. Yeah. I hope it's obvious that this is exactly the same as this. Three fifths, this is a square, but this is the square root, root so it will be a, right? So now it becomes quite obvious what to do, because this is the geometric mean of two segments, each of which we know how to build, how to construct. If we know A, we know how to construct 3A. So first we construct B is equal to 3A. Secondly, we construct this, C, which is equal to A divided by 5. We know how to do that. And finally, we construct D, which is equal to square root of B times C. And we know how to do this. I was just explaining this is a geometric mean. So that's the solution. All you have to do is to transform the formula which you are given into something which is more geometrically constructible, so to speak. OK. square root of a times b minus c times d. OK. Again, from the first glance, a, b, and c, and d are given segments of this. From the first glance, gla glance, it's not obvious what to do in this case. Well, but let me again do it step by step. and. Um, it will lead us to a solution. I understand we cannot construct the formula like that, just just like you know. However, we do know. Let me just analyze the problem from the from the end. We do know how to construct this. Am I right? Why? Because this is or. which is a Pythagorean theorem, right? So if you have P and Q, you can construct X, where P is a hypotenuse, and X and Q are two casualty. If you have a hypotenuse and a casualty, you basically do this. You construct a straight, uh, you, you construct a right angle. Here is your Q, and then if this is a P, you take from here, and this is the radius, 
We'll draw a circle. This is P. So this is P, P squared is equal to Q squared plus X squared. So that's how you construct the triangle, and that's how you construct this segment X. So you know how to construct this. It's just basically a construction of the right triangle with P as a hypotenuse and Q as a catch All right. If you know that, the question is how to convert this into this. Again, step by step. We would like, instead of AB, to have P squared, right? How to do it? Very simply. Let's construct P, which is equal to square root of AB. Then P squared would be A times B. And we know how to do that. This is a geometric mean. Same thing with CD. We construct Q, which is equal to square root of CD, which is a geometric mean. Then Q squared will be equal to CD. Once we have constructed P and Q, we can use this formula to construct our X. So the solution is, again, step by step. First, instead of AB, we construct a segment P, which has this property, geometric mean. Instead of C and G, we construct its geometric mean, which is segment Q. And then we construct a right triangle with P as a hypotenuse and Q as a catalyst. All right. Next. Square root of A, B, plus 3. Well, <clears throat> in this case, uh, again, it's not that obvious. I mean, it looks more or less like the previous problem, but in the previous problem we had the multiplication of two segments, C times G. Here we have just number 3. But let's think about what 3 actually is. 3 is the length of a segment, which has three units actually in it. We are talking about lengths, basically. So I can easily replace it with three times one. And as I was saying, we always have not only A and B, but we also have a unit segment, segment of the lengths of one. So let's just build a segment of the length three, which is this. Call this C and call this G, and we have a formula AB plus CG square root, which is more or less the same as the previous problem. So you construct P and Q equal to geometric mean of A and B. P is geometric mean of A and B, and Q is geometric mean of 3 and 1. And we know how to do that. And then this is a hypotenuse of a, uh, of a right triangle with catchy P and Q. Problem solved. Notice that lots of these uh, problems with square root uh, involved are really reduced to the problems of finding geometric mean, and Pythagorean theory. Just two things, right triangles. I ever think about right triangles, because mean is also, geometric mean is also right triangle, but construct a right triangle by um, two segments of the hypotenuse, <coughs> and Pythagorean theorem is, uh, is basically right triangle where you know either hypotenuse and the catheters or uh, a couple of catheters. All right, now the last problem here, which has three different sub-problems, 
construct segment X, which is a solution of the following quadratic equation. Now it's quadratic equation, just slightly more difficult. And uh, okay, so the A is X squared minus 2X minus 3 equals to 0. All right, so how to construct a segment the length of which is solution to this equation? Well, let's solve it. Uh, you know what? It's easy for me to just use the formula uh, for uh, solutions of the quadratic equation. Uh, but since I don't like it, I'll do it differently. I remember the full square formula. Remember, x minus a squared is equal to x squared minus 2ax plus a squared, right? So I'm trying to use this, where a is actually equal to 1 in this case. So it will be x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 4. And this is x minus 1 squared minus 4 equals to 0, which means x minus 1 squared equals to 4, <coughs> which means x minus 1 is equal to either 2 or x minus 1 is equal to minus 2. Now, since x is a segment, well, actually the length of the segment, it's not negative, so this is completely out. So we have only one solution, x is equal to 3. And I don't really have to uh, basically do some crazy manipulations. All I need is the unit segment. And from this unit segment, I basically multiply it by 3 and get 3. And that's the solution of my equation. So I have solved it algebraically. Um, got rid of the negative uh, solution, which is not applicable to my geometric means, and basically built the solution from a very simple manipulation. So that's an easy part. Now, slightly more complex x squared minus 4 a squared plus b squared equals to 0. So I have to find this. Well, again, I can probably use some formula, but in this case, um, I can do it slightly more uh, slightly simpler. I'll just transfer x squared is equal to 4a squared minus b squared. I skipped all these intermediate steps, obviously, which means x is equal to square root of 4a squared minus b squared. Now, if a and b are given, it's almost like the Pythagorean theorem, except I have to really make a tiny improvement. Instead of 4a squared, I will put 2a squared minus b squared. Now it's a pure Pythagorean theorem where 2a is a hypotenuse and b is a catalyst. So if I have a and b, all I have to do is from A, I built 2A, and then use it as a hypotenuse of the right triangle, and B as a catalyst, and that gives me the second catalyst, which is X. Trying to avoid formulas as much as I can. Um, however, in the last problem, I will not be able to do it. X squared plus ax plus b squared is equal to 0. Right. Uh, here, unfortunately, it's not as, as obvious how to do it 
in, in some special way. So let's just use the formula um, as it's supposed to be used, um, which is um, so x first and second two different is equal to two. Uh, minus a plus minus square root of a square minus 4 4 b square right so that's the formula basically I'm just using the formula which I happen to remember I mean if I don't remember I can always do something like extraction of the full square from this. It would be x plus a divided by 2 square. Uh, so it would be x square plus ax plus a square over 2 square. So now I have to subtract it and then plus b square, which is basically the same thing. That's how I find x plus a over 2. And this is more or less the same Pythagorean theorem. Anyway, so I can do that. Or I can just go straight to a formula. It doesn't really matter. Now, obviously, I should reject the minus here because it, produce, it produces the uh, negative result. Actually, you know what? I think I'm wrong here. I think I should put minus here. Because with plus and minus here, my result would be negative even with a plus sign. Yes, this is the right way to do it. I mean, this is the right equation. The equation with a plus sign doesn't have a solution in a geometrical sense. But this one does. OK. So all we have to do now is to, again, as I said, reject this negative thing. Oh, but wait a moment. Now the negative thing you don't really have to reject because both positive and negative will give you positive result. All right, fine. So let's build both of them. So x1 is equal to a plus square root of this. And x2 is equal to a minus square root of this. Now, how to construct these solutions? Well, again, step by step. First, you do this. So how to construct c, which is equal to a squared minus 4b squared? Well, elementary. This is a, a catechus of a right triangle with a as a hypotenuse and 2b this is 2b square, and 2b as another catalyst. So that's how we construct c. Then, in this case, you construct a plus c, and then divide it by 2. And here, it's a minus c, and then divide it by 2. So the rest is simple. So as you see, what we can, what we can do with these uh, methods, you can solve geometrical problems using algebraic methodology. So if, if somebody has a problem when there are certain segments which satisfy certain equation produced by whatever ways and means, doesn't really matter. And if that equation is uh, basically solvable, like we are solving this quadratic equation, then you can geometrically construct the segment which is basically a solution to this equation. Well, that was, you know, that was the meaning of this lecture, that this is an application of, uh, of algebraic methodology to geometric problems. Um, now, the notes for this lecture are obviously on the web. This is the website. The uh, website is open for everybody. And uh, I do encourage you to 
not only look at the uh, lectures, not only uh, try to solve the problems, but also register and go to the exams as well. Especially I'm encouraging parents to basically work with their students, their children, to, uh, to guide them through the exams where you can actually check the results and, uh, and supervise the educational process. That's it for today. Thank you very much.